When the Spartans conquered territory, its defeated people were enslaved and given the name Helots. Several ancient writers believe the name has origins linked to the subjugated southern Laconian town, Helios, in which the original Helots are believed to be captured from. Eventually, the Helot population greatly outnumbered the Spartans, even outnumbering the Spartans 7 to 1 in 479 BC. It was this that drove the Spartans to fear the Helots, as Aristotle compared them to an enemy constantly sitting in wait for the disaster of the Spartans. This prompted the Spartan tradition of always carrying their spears around, only unbuckling and letting their guard down once at home, which they made sure to lock before sleep in fear of a helot seizing them. Ancient Greek historian Theopompus described the entire situation as cruel and bitter, for not only the helots who evidently suffered greatly at the hands of the Spartans, but the Spartans themselves who had trapped themselves in a world of fear even back at home. However, this relationship was a necessary one in order for the Spartans to live out the way of life. The Helots helped out with the agricultural efforts that the Spartans so lacked. The Helots were allowed to travel within Spartan territory and have families, earn a wage, and live a relatively normal life. The Helots handled all the menial tasks that were considered undesirable, being assigned what an anti-Spartan historian Myron of Preen considered to be shameful and leading to disgrace. This was all a part of the Spartans' ploy to keep the Helots down psychologically, chaining them as beneath the Spartans, beating them a set number of times, regardless if they did right or wrong. This fear of revolt went deeper, driving the Spartans to even incorporate Helot killing as one of their rites of passage, in which a young Spartan boy would be required to enter the countryside to kill as many Helots as possible with only a knife. The strongest and most fittest Helots were targeted to select anybody else, especially a weak target, could be interpreted as a sign of weakness and that could not do for the Spartans in their own tradition of survival of the fittest as well as the doctrine of keeping the Helots fearful and beneath the citizens of Sparta. Interestingly enough, even with the harsh treatment and other massacres targeting Helots, the population of Helots continued to rise. While the Spartan population declined, this could be attributed to the Helots having their families intact, allowing for reproduction. Whilst the Spartans practiced eugenic traditions such as throwing out weak children out to die, as well as the men being out and about fighting so often, leaving fewer women pregnant. Not to mention the conflicts often being extremely bloody, decimating Spartan populations. A notable one being the Peloponnesian War that was fought against the Athenians. The Spartans did eventually win the war, but it cost so many lives that the peak population from 50,000 to 500 BC it can only be speculated how much it would have shrunk by. Meanwhile, the Helos total population after the war was estimated to be nearing 200,000. It was said that only 40 Spartan citizens could be seen among a crowd of nearly 4,000, highlighting the sheer number differential. The Helots waited patiently waiting for any signs of weakness that they could take advantage of, and some would occasionally appear as a light at the end of the tunnel. The most prominent revolt was sparked by an earthquake in 464 BC that shook Laconia, killing 20,000 Spartans, decimating the city of Sparta. This led to the start of a revolt so large that by 462 BC, the Spartans had to swallow their pride and ask the Athenians, who they would later enter into war against, for help. 4,000 soldiers were sent, but were quickly turned back in fear of the Athenians siding with the Helots instead. After each rebellion followed increased violence, the Spartans grew to see the Helots as more of a threat, yet undoubtedly the Helots played a crucial and indispensable role in skyrocketing Sparta to economic prosperity, as well as being the precursors of its eventual downfall shaping Spartan history as we know now in the 21st century. <laughs>